Hi. So today we're going to be looking at decimals and the four rules. That's adding, subtracting, multiplying and dividing. Um, basically, I think if you remember to keep the decimal point in, this, in the right place, you can't really go wrong. Um, you, are, you, you know how to add up, do column addition, you know how to do column subtraction, you know how to do bus stop division, and you know how to do multiplication and long multiplication. And it doesn't change if there's a decimal. It, you just have to make sure that you put the decimal point in. So I'm just going to very quickly whiz through um, adding decimals. Um, if you were given, say, 1.2 plus 3.06, so if you were given that as a sum, you would need to make sure that you line up the decimals as you do your column division, uh, column addition. So you put, you make it look like this. Okay, so we've got our decimal point in line, and then you have your equal sign at the bottom. Okay, so as long as the decimal points are lined up, you can't go wrong. If the decimal points do not line up, then you won't get the right answer because you'll be adding the wrong, the wrong bits to the wrong. You have to make sure that your units are in the units column, your tenths are in the tenths column, and your hundredths are in the hundredths column. Now we've talked about before, if you find you have a blank hole, you can put a zero in there. That is not wrong, because that makes it better for you. And then you simply add the sum as you would any other adding sum. So you start with your, your, your smallest column. So this is our hundredths. So we, zero plus six is six. 2 plus 0 is 2, then we put our decimal point in, and then 1 plus 3 is 4. Okay, it's as simple as that. As long as the decimal points are lined up, you're fine. And it's the same with subtracting. Always remember to have your bigger number that you're subtracting at the top. So um, if we had 32.9, uh, take away 19.6. Simply, it's exactly like that. Your decimal points are in a line. So when you, if you put your decimal point here as well, as long as you line those up, you can't go wrong. So we just do nine take away six is three. Two take away nine you can't do. So we're going to borrow from the three. So now we've got twelve take away nine, which is three, and then we've got two take away one, which is one. Okay. Our decimals are all in a line and it's easier when you've got um, squares in your maths book to help you. Okay, now we'll move on to multiplying by decimals. Um, I think what you've only got you've only got a few questions to do today like this. Um, so in fact I'm going to take the first example from the book. You've got 115.6 times 4. So what we're going to do is put our decimal point there. And we're going to say, so we're saying 6 times 4 is 24. And we do that there, like that. Then we say 5 times 4 is 20 plus 2 is 22. 1 times 4 is 4 plus 2 is 6. And we've got our answer 62.4. If you think oh I'm not sure if that's right you can do it a quick um, rough answer in your head can't you you know that 15 times 4 is 60 so you know that you're this is in the so it's going to be roughly 60 and it is so that's a quick way just to make sure you've got your decimal point in the right place another way with these when you're multiplying if you've got one number after the decimal point in the sum which you have you have one number after the decimal point in your answer as well. Just keep your decimal points in a line. You can't go wrong. Okay, and when we do dividing with decimals, um, I'll turn my board around. We do sixes into, I think that's 8.22. It's another one from the book. We just do exactly the same. Make sure your decimals are lined up. So we'll put our decimal point there. 6 is into 8, goes 1, remains a 2, and then we've got our decimal point. 6 is into 22, goes 3, remains a 
4, and then 6 is into 42, go 7. So our answer is 1.37. Okay. It's keeping your decimal points in line. That is the most important thing. Um, keep it using the squares in your book. So your work today, you just need to do, I've just taken a little bit from a page, so you're not doing the whole page. So you've got to do G, H, I, and J. Um, when you get on, so G is adding and subtracting. H is multiplying and dividing. I is multiplying and dividing by 10. And we've done this before, so we'll just quickly whiz through that again as well. Remember, if you're multiplying by 10, so if we have, let's have say 3.2, if we're going to multiply that by 10, then our numbers shift to the left, so it becomes 32. You could have it like that, couldn't you? I've just added that zero there so you can see that our numbers stay the same. They stay together. They do not change. We can't put any zeros in the middle. Some of you like to do that for some reason. So our three and our two stay together. They just move one way if you're multiplying and they move the other way if you're dividing. But they stick to, imagine they're like stuck together with glue, these two. So here they are here. They've just moved up the scale. If we were going to multiply by 10 again, they'd move further up. So then, so if we did 32 times 10, we'd get 320. And we can still put, if you want to, we can still put that there. Okay. If we were dividing 3.2 by 10, then the numbers move the other way. So then we get 0.3. Three, two. So you can see our three and our two have moved from here. They've moved this way this time. Okay, so if you're dividing, the numbers go that way. And if you're multiplying, the numbers go that way. But they stay, stick together. They just move closer that way or that way. Okay, so that's multiplying by 10. And there's no, they're all by 10. And the last one, you've got to put them in order. That's probably going to be the trickiest one, but I don't think you should have a problem with that. Um, when you finished, so I don't want you, I'd rather you didn't do this on the sheet because I don't think you've got room to do it on the sheet. Um, if you want to, I suppose you can. I'm just, I don't know where you'd squeeze all your answers into J. So if you can do it in your book, please do it in your book. Take a photo, send it to me on Shovey, and I look forward to seeing it later. Okay, be brilliant.